saw, dude. Wow. So, here's the deal. I'm gonna fly from Austin to the Big Island of Hawaii and stay for five days. However, the trip there is about 10 plus hours each way, so I'll probably only get three full days on the island. But what am I gonna do with those three full days? Well, that's where Google's Gemini, OpenAI's ChatGPT, and Claude AI come into play. Each AI model will get their very own data plan based off the same prompt. Gemini gets day one, ChatGPT gets day two, and Claude gets day three. After the trip, we're gonna rank each AI and see which one of these AI bots is the best trip planner. Enough talking, I'm gonna get to prompting and I'll see you guys in two months. Two months later. <laughs> So it is 6 a.m. right now, and our flight's in about an hour, and we've got like two conjoining flights, but I kind of ran into some issues while I was making this video. When I asked each AI chatbot for stuff to do on the big island, I naturally got a bunch of overlapping locations recommended to me. So to make this fair, I took all of the popular places they listed and gave each AI a few unique ones from that list. And then I came up with this prompt to try and make it as fair as possible. I was gonna do a voiceover here of this prompt, but I don't wanna waste your time, so feel free to pause this video now to read it, or continue on with me to Hilo, Hawaii. <laughs> After waking up bright and early and dancing around our rental like a complete idiot, we walked downstairs. Our rental was sick. We had complimentary cats, chickens, a pond that looked like it was made out of the green ooze from Troll 2. Oh my God. And even a gecko back in our room. But we had a day planned by Google Gemini to get to, right? Well, kinda. You see, Gemini was the only chatbot who didn't understand my prompt, and instead just kept trying to plan the whole trip while sending me Google Maps to look at, so I took it upon myself to take some of its suggestions, including only Hilo-specific locations, and we began our day. First up, we visited Ken's House of Pancakes, which was, I'd say, pretty good. After breakfast, we went to Rainbow Falls Lookout. Now, the waterfall was beautiful, but you can't get too close, which sucks. That's kind of the way it goes with these touristy spots. Hiking to the top though, my wife and I found some really cool banyan trees and we took a little video being all cute and then we left and headed towards the Hawaii Tropical Botanical Garden. But not before stopping at a sack and save for some waters. Side note, sack and save is pretty special to me because there used to be one in Garland, Texas where I grew up and I hadn't seen one in years. Anyway, we arrived at the Tropical Botanical Garden and it was totally worth the entrance fee. There were plants there that we had never seen before and amazing views out to the ocean. By the time we left, my tummy was a rumbling, so we found a small cafe, not on a list, but close to the garden, to eat at. Afterwards, we tried to go to Kawamana Caves Park, I'm probably butchering that name, but parking there was a nightmare, so we skipped it for that day and drove to the Hilo Farmer's Market, where we discovered that we love papayas. After we left and went to one of the few local skate shops on the entire Big Island, because I love to collect and support local skate shops. So I met a super cool dude that worked in there at Oasis Skate Shop. And after talking for a while, I knew I had to support this cool shop. So I bought a sweet deck from him and the rest is history. <laughs> What a wonderful day in Hilo, Hawaii. I'm exhausted, I'm gonna take a shower, and then tomorrow morning we are going to be doing our second full day here, which was planned by our most famous AI, ChatGPT. Oh, I will see you guys bright and early tomorrow morning. Let's get it. On our second full day, we pet one of the cats outside before taking off to our first ChatGPT recommended spots, Volcanoes National Park. Now, this drive was about 50 minutes from where we were staying, but was 100% worth it. Just got to the first place on the list for ChatGPT's recommendation, and it's actually kind of cold up here. ChatGPT had recommended a few different trails, so we started with Kaluuya Caldera, AKA the Kaluuya Crater. I don't know how to pronounce that. <laughs> this thing was massive and is currently the youngest and most active volcano on the island. 
Unfortunately, we didn't get to witness it while it was erupting, but apparently it did erupt briefly just a couple days after we visited. Bummer. We did get to see a lot of the steam releasing from the ground though, which was crazy hot when you put your hand over it. We even took a side trail where we were breathing in toxic fumes from the ground. Apparently that's allowed. <coughs> it's probably good to breathe this stuff in, right? There was also a sign there that talked about a kid who had fallen into a crack back in the early 2000s and had gotten severely burned, which was pretty terrifying. And on September 3rd, 2000, a visitor suffered severe leg burns when he walked off the trail and broke through thin crust. This whole show is where he stepped into 205 degree steam. The drawing they have there is wild. Volcano? <laughs> Shortly after, we were already hungry, so before walking any of the other trails, we decided to have lunch at the Volcano House Hotel that ChatGPT had recommended, though the actual restaurant is called The Rim, we found out. From the restaurant, you can see the volcano, which was pretty cool, so kudos to ChatGPT for the recommendation. After eating, we went to the Devastation Trail. This trail was kind of... Destroyed. It almost felt like we were in a post-apocalyptic movie. After it, we quickly drove along the chain of craters row to enjoy the scenic overlooks, or at least that's what ChatGPT told us to do, but that too just became looking at a bunch of big holes. So we made our way to a parking lot where we could walk to the lava tubes because parking right next to the tube is damn near impossible. The lava tube was super cool and felt a lot cooler temperature wise than the outside. And you know your boy had to get a backflip. Now, ChatGPT had also recommended the Volcano Art Center, but looking online, neither my wife or me was really interested. So we skipped that and headed to something else on our list from ChatGPT, which was the Panalu'u Bake Shop. Now, the pastries were pretty good, but I wouldn't say they were anything special, though my Bavarian cream thingy was delicious. That's good. After we finished up there, we had two more places on our list. However, Kale, which is the southernmost point of the United States, was way too far. So we replaced it with Whittington Beach and went to Black Sands Beach after. Now, Whittington Beach turned out to be super cool as it had an abandoned pier that was destroyed back in 1946 by a tsunami. It now sits in disrepair as the ocean beats against it, but it made a great place for taking photos. After getting some photos here, we headed to Black Sands Beach. This ended up being my favorite beach of the trip. The black sand was super unique and it didn't feel like regular sand at all, but rather really fine, grinded up rocks. We also got to meet some sea turtles, which I think was one of the highlights for my wife on this trip, as well as myself. While walking to the other side of the beach to take a few photos, I noticed an abandoned building with a bunch of abandoned buildings around it. I looked it up on Google and apparently it was a resort that was abandoned long ago. Now with urban exploration being one of my favorite hobbies, something I show on this channel a lot, I had to go check it out. Inside you could see that there was a lot of graffiti and honestly it felt pretty spooky in there even though it was daytime. Crazy. Once I was done though, Tiff and I started walking back towards the beach where this guy approached us and tried to sell us coconuts and then mushrooms and then said he was gonna hit us over the head with this giant stick if we didn't buy any. <laughs> no coconut man. The coconut man. Coming to a movie theater near you. Oh my god! It was definitely an interesting experience. <laughs> After all of this, we finally called it a day and drove a little over an hour back to our rental. Sorry, I'm just driving. You can hear all 
the chickens and the roosters going crazy outside. On our last full day on the Big Island, we wanted to check out the complete opposite side where Kona is. So Claude, the chatbot of the day, ended up creating an itinerary around this area of the island. Kicking off the day, though, it recommended some coffee in Hilo before leaving called Just Cruise and Coffee, which turned out to be some really good coffee. So go, Claude. We then made our way to Kona. The drive there was really cool, and I think we drove through about 400 different climates, or at least that's what it felt like. Once we got to Kona, we found some parking, which was a little pricey, but what do you expect? Hawaii is the least affordable state in the country. And we hit up the first place in Kona on Claude's list, which was Kona's farm. Market. Now, compared to Hilo's, this was not nearly as good, but we did end up getting some souvenirs and then started to get a little hungry. Now, Claude recommended a pokey restaurant, but it wasn't open yet, so we ended up at this cool little restaurant along Ali E Drive called Island Java Lava for brunch. This still adhered to following Claude's suggestions, though, since Ali E Drive was a street that was recommended by Claude to visit and shop at that day. After eating, we checked out a few other shops along the street and decided to move on to the next place on the list. However, this is where we ran into some issues. First, Claude recommended visiting Makua Ikua'u Church, but looking online, it seemed kind of boring. So we looked at the next place on the list, which was Hanaua Naua National Historic Park. And this is the lowercase a. Do you want my head to explode? But this ended up being about 45 minutes south down the island, which would make our drive back later two plus hours. So that one didn't really make sense to go to either. Next on the list after that was Kona Brewery to take a tour and drink some beer. However, beer makes me really tired if I'm only drinking a couple. And honestly, I didn't think that that was a good idea since I was gonna have to drive an hour and a half back to our rental later that day. Plus, drinking and driving at any quantity is dumb. So not very smart to recommend, Claude, knowing I was gonna have to drive back to Hilo that day. Now, at this point, we pretty much ditched Claude's itinerary because it went downhill quick. We walked around Ali E Street a bit more to shop and get snacks. Then we started to head back to Hilo early. However, on the way back, we got stuck in the craziest fog I've ever driven in. You can't really tell from the video, but I could barely see even five feet in front of the car. But eventually we made it out of this and I decided that we would try to go back to Kawamana Cave Park once we got near Hilo. This ended up being really cool and it actually had two different caves, one being small and the other one going on for about two miles, which if I had more time and a flashlight other than my iPhone, I would have gone to the end of. I also wore terrible shoes since I wasn't planning on doing this, but it was still super fun and made up for some of the adventure that Claude wasn't able to deliver on. Tiff also got to see some chickens, which was pretty cool. Hi, chicken. Chicken. Well, I'm back in Austin, Texas, and Hawaii was amazing. Before we left our rental though at 4 a.m. on that Saturday, I did leave a book at that rental. So if you ever happen to be in Hilo, it's called the Hilltop Vacation, I think, or something like that. Make sure to check out my book. I'll put up a picture right here of where you can find it. And also, if you just want to grab your own copy, I've got a link down in the description below where you can get it off Amazon right now. And I'm working on book two. But all of that aside, how did our AIs stack up against each other? Well, in my opinion, Here's how I'd rank them. Third and last place has to go to Google Gemini. So I love how Google Gemini connects to Google Maps and gives you these Google Maps within the AI chatbot as it's planning your trip. But even after multiple prompts, it couldn't seem to grasp the task of going up against other AI bots. Dumb people are always blissfully unaware of how dumb they really are. <laughs> A task that Claude and ChatGPT fully understood first try. No, God, please, no, no! Second place is... Gonna have to be Claude. 
Now, Claude's an interesting one because out of all three of these, this was my first time using Claude and I loved how personal Claude feels. It somehow feels like you're talking to a real person more so than the other two chatbots on this list. I also really like that Claude gave us somewhere to stop in Hilo, knowing that we may want coffee before we go on our road trip, which I thought was a really nice touch. However, as you saw in the video, the plan sort of fell apart, like planning stuff 45 minutes south down the island knowing that there's a highway that only goes up this way and goes up this way. There's not one that just cuts back to the regular highway. So it would have added on 45 extra minutes or 37 extra minutes, which would have made it over two hours to get back to Hilo once we were done with everything, which seemed kind of crazy knowing that I was going to have to do all of this in one day and drive back to Hilo. But that leads us to our number one, our first place, which is, I mean, you already know, there's only one left, ChatGPT. Now, I was really actually hoping that ChatGPT wouldn't win this because it's just so famous that it seems so obvious, but ChatGPT out of these three just did the best. It was a little off with the national park, but for the most part, we were able to fit most of the things that it recommended all into that one day. You got a gift, my friend. You got a gift. Now, as some final thoughts, I think that AI is going to get a lot better in the coming years or even in the coming months. I really, really believe that we're going to reach AGI here in probably the next year or so. And once that happens, the trip planning and every other kind of planning that our AI bots do in our lives is going to get exponentially better and hopefully not take over the world and leave us all jobless. Although if the world ends, that's probably a bigger worry. Hmm. Anywho, thank you guys so much for watching this full video. If you made it to this point, this video took a lot of work. And if you could, please hit that subscribe button to support it. If you loved it, please let me know down in the comments if you've been to Hawaii or if you've used these chatbots for planning any of your own trips. Also, share it with a friend if that's something that you like to do. And just as another quick reminder, my book is down in the description below if you want to check that out. I'm going to go ahead and leave a video right here of something that YouTube thinks that you would like to watch. It's just something that's recommended to you. I'm Eric J. Coons. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you guys keep exploring. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.